From LEX 18, your official UK sports station for Big Blue Nation, this is BBN Tonight. Presented by UK Federal Credit Union. Welcome to BBN Tonight. I'm Anna Tarullo. And I'm Maggie Davis in for Keith Farmer tonight. Great show lined up for you this evening. Tons of NFL draft coverage coming your way. That's right. You'll hear from several of the cats who heard their name called over the weekend. And Tom Leach is also going to be joining us in just a little bit. That's right. But let's get right into it. Four Wildcats drafted over the weekend. Five more signed free agent deals. So a good weekend overall for those men, but also for Mark Stoops and the Kentucky football program as a whole. That's going to be tonight's Big Blue Story presented by CHI St. Joseph Health. Wondell Robinson, Josh Paschal, and Luke Fortner all came off the board on night number two, marking just the fourth time in school history Kentucky had three players selected in the first three rounds. It's happened now twice in the last four years, and by the end of the draft, Darian Kennard had joined the party as well, becoming the 22nd Wildcat to get drafted under head coach Mark Stoops. As the SEC Network's Peter Burns noted, UK had more players selected in the first 65 picks than Ohio State, Clemson, Florida, USC, Texas, and Oklahoma. And ESPN's Adam Rittenberg said Kentucky is, quote, rapidly becoming a program like Iowa, Utah, and Wisconsin, outperforming the recruiting rankings on NFL Draft Weekend. Really high praise there from that. Oh, I saw that Peter Burns tweet, and I was like, yes, yeah. that was awesome. <laughs> Including uh, Wondell Robinson, he's one of those. He shot up the draft board all the way to the second round, pick number 43 overall, and he's really in a good spot. Last season, the Giants wide receivers were pretty bad. Now, almost all their guys dealt with injuries, but availability, that's still the best ability. <laughs> New coach Brian Daywell is no for using guys with unique skill sets successfully. So New York could be a really fun spot for Wandale with a lot of opportunity. I mean, it's just surreal. I mean, since I was five years old, that's been a moment that I've been dreaming about my whole life. And this to have it all come to life, it was just, I can't even put into words what I was feeling. So uh, it was just great, though. Well, I was on the phone with the general manager, the head coach, um, the owner, and just all the, everybody that works up in there. Um, and just, they were just letting me know that they were impressed with everything that I did through the process. And, um, they're just happy to have me, and I'm happy to go to New York. So, I mean, nobody can really think that you're going to come off Western Hills High School field and be a second-round draft pick. So um, just for me to do it, it just shows a lot of kids that you can come out of anywhere and do whatever you need to do. So. Love that for Wandale, and I just love his story that he came back here from Nebraska and what he proved on the field this season. Obviously, it was enough, and it was a lot. Absolutely, and Kentucky fans, the good news here, they didn't have to wait too long nope. because Josh Pascal came off the board just a couple of picks later, and the good news here is he is heading to Detroit. He already talked to the media there. He talked about what he could bring to this franchise. Listen to this. I actually had my... Um a former interview at the combine with them. So I met Dan Campbell, um, Coach Wash, uh, Coach Glenn. I met them all there. Uh, we hit it off. We watched some film, just talked about ball and life. And um, instantly I knew it would be a great fit. Their versatility is one of the biggest keys in my game. Um, I move all across the front. I'm not sure right now what um, Coach Wash and um, Coach Glenn will have me playing. Uh, but, you know, whatever it is, you know, I'm going to give it my all. Uh, and I'm very versatile. So whatever it is, I'll be able to pick it up. Yeah, versatility has been a huge aspect of Josh Pascal's game his entire time at Kentucky. Now we're going to see how that translates to the league. I know the head coach, Dan Campbell, is going to absolutely love Josh Pascal, and I think the fan base is going to feel the same way, Anna. Completely agree. Who doesn't love Josh Pascal? Right. They'd be crazy Sad not to. see him go. <laughs> yes. Next off the board was Luke Fortner. The Jacksonville Jaguars selected him with the 65th pick in the draft. He could be a starter day one. The Jags drafted Fortner here with the expectation that he is going to be their center. Jags head coach Doug Peterson says he could see a little time at guard to get him comfortable, but they drafted him to play center. No real competition currently on that roster either. Longtime backup Tyler Shatley is there, but this is going to be Luke's job as long as he shows he can handle it. I think I am. Uh, you know, it's obviously going to be a tall task and a tough job, and there's going to be some tough times, some ups and downs, but I think I'm prepared. I think I'm ready to handle it, and I'm excited. Looking forward to it. Man, great fit. Great pick for him. Really ideal situation. I'm ready to watch Luke thrive. Definitely. Really and the 65th pick in the draft, I mean, mm -hmm. how, I don't even right? know if you can say that that's a coincidence. Goosebumps. How special is that goosebumps with John Schlarman's number, of course. And they said on the broadcast that if you're an interior lineman who is smart, you're intelligent, you can play multiple positions, you can play in this league forever, and that is Luke Fortner to a T. So I think we're going to be watching him 
on Sundays for a very long time. And the same can be said for his Big Blue Wall teammate, Darian Kennard. Yes, we did see him slip and get drafted later than he was being projected. But the good news is he's going to be with a great team in the Kansas City Chiefs. And Kennard was selected in the fifth round, number 145 overall. Those are numbers he is not going to forget anytime soon. I think coming from Kentucky, a lot of us are looked down on, especially as a uh, lineman. But uh, we've always played with a chip on our shoulder as an offensive line. Um, you know, our offensive, uh, you know, I guess power was from our run game. And a lot of teams thought that we wouldn't be contenders with anything because as long as, as, long as they could stop the run, you know, that they would be fine. But they still couldn't. I got a lot of uh, stuff to prove and I got a big chip on my shoulder. So uh, I can't wait to get to work and uh, show these other teams that they, they messed up bad. So Kennard definitely has more roster competition here than some others. The Chiefs starters are obviously pretty solid, but they don't have the depth really that they're looking for anywhere on the line. So Kennard should have opportunity at both guard and right tackle and give the Chiefs some versatility they didn't have before. And as soon as the draft was over, phones started ringing for the guys who were not selected. Mm -hmm. Yusuf Corker gets to join Wandale Robinson in New York. He's signed with the Giants. The G-men have a massive need at strong safety, so a really good chance for Yusuf to prove he belongs in the league on that roster. Marquand McCall signed with the Carolina Panthers. They really value that big tackle in the middle of their scheme and carried three nose tackles on their roster last season. So if Bully can impress, he will add the kind of depth they really need in Matt Rule's scheme. Justin Riggs signed with the Bengals since he did just bring in veteran Hayden Hurst at tight end and have a full roster at the moment, but they're definitely looking for some higher quality depth. Rig will be looking to provide just that. And Dare Rosenthal has landed in Atlanta with the Falcons. He'll have to do some work to make the rotation, but Atlanta's tackles were middle of the pack at best last season. I'll say it surprised me and I think a lot of people to see Dare not get drafted, but excited that he still gets this opportunity. Absolutely. It definitely surprised me. Quandre Bosley, he's getting a chance with the Dallas Cowboys. They've got a full roster currently. But all-pro Trayvon Diggs is the only position solidified for them. And last year's second-round pick, former Wildcat Chelvin, Kelvin Joseph's status is in question because of his alleged involvement in a drive-by murder. He has not been charged with anything. The Cowboys did draft another corner in the fifth round as well. All right, coming up next, we'll get Tom Leach's take on all of this. That's right, including what he thinks about all these big blue reunions. You're watching BBN Tonight. We'll be right back.